Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew. It's the first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 13, verses 24 through 34. And this is what it says. Then Jesus told them another story. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who planted good seed in his field. That night when everyone was asleep, his enemy came and planted weeds among the wheat and then left. Later, the wheat sprouted and the heads of grain grew, but the weeds also grew. Then the man's servants came to him and said, You planted good seed in your field. Where did the weeds come from? The man answered, An enemy planted weeds. The servants asked, Do you want us to pull up the weeds? The man answered, No, because when you pull up the weeds, you might also pull up the wheat. Let the weeds and the wheat grow together until the harvest time. At harvest time, I will tell the workers, first gather the weeds and tie them together to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring them into my barn. Then Jesus told another story. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a man planted in his field. That seed is the smallest of all seeds, but when it grows, it is one of the largest garden plants. It becomes big enough for the wild birds to come and build their nest in its branches. Then Jesus told another story. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and hid in a large tub of flour until it made all the dough rise. Jesus used stories to tell all these things to the people. He always used stories to teach them. Pray with me. Jesus, this day, this time, this place, it's yours. Use your holy hand to create space enough that we might that we might surely brush up close to you, hear your voice, to know your touch. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. A little while back, I was reminiscing. My wife calls it daydreaming, but that's not what it is. It's reminiscing. That sounds a lot better anyway, doesn't it? I was reminiscing about when I was a kid. My father had a garden, and this garden wasn't, you know, side of the house, pick a tomato every once in a while kind of garden. We had to get in a car and drive to the garden. It was a one-acre garden. My job was to pull weeds, so it looked a whole lot more like a farm than it did like a garden. And every day, Dad would, would drive me to the garden, and, and we'd work in the garden, and my job was to pull the weeds. He said that we shared the garden with someone else, but I don't ever remember seeing that someone else, and I never remember seeing that someone else's plants. He may have had a pumpkin in the corner or something like that, but all day long pulling weeds. And I had to learn the difference between a, a useful plant and a weed. A weed, you have to get down, you have to dig, you have to pull in order to get it up. A useful plant, well, they come up pretty easy. Oh, I had to keep my eye on the weeds. I had to pull weeds among the beans. I didn't care that much about beans. But pulling the weeds among the beans, I had to 
to, to look for the weeds and, and to, to get down and to dig and to pull. We grew okra. Okra. I had to pull. I was working for okra. Now, I told Dad that any time a vegetable begins to grow hair, run away. We ought not be growing okra. I don't care if it's pickled or boiled or fried. It, it's still okra. Run away. That was what, but I was pulling weeds for okra. <laughs> I have a friend who said he ate so much boiled okra as a kid, his socks won't stay up now. <laughs> okra. Imagine uh, pulling wheat, working for okra. I didn't care anything about okra. Really didn't care a whole lot about the garden, to be honest. I have to whisper it right now. I wish I had read this story before our dad ever sent me to pull in weeds because Jesus says, leave the weeds alone. I could have turned to my dad and said, Father, you know, Jesus said, leave the weeds alone. The thought of me telling my father that makes me giggle a little bit on the inside. <laughs> it makes, uh, leave the weeds alone. Well, I had to read it again, and it still says, leave the weeds alone. I read it a third time, leave the weeds alone. But then when I read it the fourth time, I realized Jesus isn't talking about weeds. No, Jesus was talking about his favorite sermon topic, and that's the way he starts it. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like. That the kingdom of heaven... The kingdom of God, he uses them interchangeably. It's, it's the same thing. It was his number one favorite sermon topic. That he came to usher in this, this kingdom of God or this, this kingdom of heaven. And, and, and over 50 times he tells stories in the gospels about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And he doesn't give a 500 word theme and say, okay, well this is what I mean by the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. No, he gives snapshots images that, that we might train our eyes to look and see, that we might have our imaginations controlled by Him, that, that, that we're always on the lookout for that kingdom of God that, that He says is right in the middle of us, that we might develop ears that listen for the, the kingdom of God that's all around us. He came to usher in this this kingdom, this new creation, right here in the middle of the old kingdom. And as close to a definition as Jesus gives is in the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is written in a, a form called parallelism. It's the same way the Psalms are written, that something's stated and then it's restated in a little bit different way. And that in the Lord's Prayer we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That the kingdom of God comes when God's will is done. It's not at this place that you go when you die. He's, what Jesus says in the Lord's Prayer and teaches you and I how to pray, he says, that kingdom come, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That God's will is done in heaven and, and that, that Jesus came to usher in this kingdom, this new creation where God's rule is done. And it's done in some unlikely places like your life and mine. It's not about weeds. It's not about weeds. And the story doesn't, d doesn't end right there. Jesus tells two more stories, one with a man and the other with a woman, that, that even though there's, there are weeds, the man keeps planting. And he plants the smallest of seeds that grows into a bush large enough for, for birds to make nests in. And the woman, even though they're weeds, she keeps working. And she works in the leaven. Well, that, that makes the whole of the dough rise. That yes, they're weeds. Evil is real. Heartache, it's real. Suffering, it's real. But keep working, keep planting, keep growing. Keep going. That just because they're weeds, we don't stop. It's not about the weeds. It's not about weeds. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. It's not about weeds. That yes, weeds are real, but it's not about the weeds. And the first thing that I want to talk about is 
is keep planting, keep growing, keep working in your family. In your family. The Ten Commandments start off with the first four commandments talk about our relationship with God. It's the fifth commandment that moves on. And it says, honor your father and mother. That it's the family is the first place that we re- learn to relate to the world around us. But it's also the family very likely is the first place that, that we're hurt. Very likely it's the family is the first place where we know a wound The family very likely is the first place where we know heartache, where we experience weeds. But it's not about weeds. It's not about weeds. It's about about God's action. I read a national survey that the University of Nebraska and Lincoln did several years back. And it was a national survey where they began to uncover elements of a strong family. And one of those elements in a strong family was appreciation, that family members gave one another compliments, that they, well, that they planted, that they grew, that they they worked ways to build one another up in appreciation, that Another element of a strong family was that they were able to deal with crisis in a positive manner. It didn't say that, that strong families don't have crisis. No, every family has to deal with crisis. Every family. But the strong family deals with crisis in a positive manner. They're willing to take a, a bad situation and see something positive and work on that. Another one element was time, time together, that they invested their time in one another. They had a high degree of commitment, that they had good communication patterns. But the one that struck me most peculiar was the last one. And the reason that it struck me peculiar is because this wasn't a, a religious survey. It was done as a national survey by a state university. And the last thing that it said as an element of strong family was that they had a high degree of religious orientation. In other words, families set aside a time to practice what they say they believe. Strong families set aside a time, not to focus on the weeds, but to practice what they say they believe. A time to to pray for each other. A time to pray with each other. A time and a place set aside to focus not on the weeds, but to focus. To focus on the living God. A time for worship. A time that's set aside to create space that we might brush up close to God together. Together. It's not about weeds. It's about planting, growing, and and working within the family. It's not only about the weeds in the family. It's, It's not about the weeds that grow in other places. It's, it's, it's not about the weeds that grow among strangers. And that's the second thing that I want to talk about. I understand there's a legend that's lived in Princeton, New Jersey for a while. It's a story about when I, Albert Einstein lived there. He was walking down the, the sidewalk one day and as he was walking in front of a hotel, rich widow pulled up in her car, popped the trunk and mistook Einstein for a bellboy. And ask him if he would take her bags to the lobby. Well, Einstein saw that she needed help. So he reached in her trunk, grabbed her bags, took them to the lobby. To which she gave him a healthy tip. Einstein put the tip in his pocket and continued to walk down the sidewalk, unraveling the mysteries of the universe. (laughs) 
<laughs> well, we all like those stories where greatness goes undercover. We all like those stories, don't we? Jesus told those stories. Right here in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 25, Jesus told those stories where greatness goes undercover, but it's not Einstein that's undercover. It's Jesus himself that goes undercover in the lives of the hungry, of the thirsty, of the stranger, of those who are naked, those who are sick, those who are imprisoned. Those very folks that, well, sometimes we might point to and, and say they're weeds. Must have done something wrong. But that's not the way that Jesus looks at them. That they matter. That they matter to God and so that they, they matter to us. And here at Roswell United Methodist, that, that we've joined together to keep our, to practice our vision, to practice our hearing, to, to reach out and together, to, to let, let people know that they matter to God and that they matter to us. And so we reach out through job networking to help those who are seeking employment. My neighbor's pantry, for over the past year, we fed over a thousand people each week during the pandemic. Together, we've put our little with God's much, and we've helped older adults through Wesley Woods who've outlived their financial resources. Over 1,800 people, 80% of whom have have needed our help. And together we've put our, our little with God's much and, and together we've given over a million dollars to help those older adults who've outlived their, their financial resources. Together we join together to tutor in local schools children who have English as a second language. Just last week we received a call on Saturday from a police officer who recognized that this place of community and faith is one that reaches out, reaches out to, to the stranger. Police officer called, said that there was a 17-year-old girl that was dropped off here in Roswell. She was from Michigan, and by law, she couldn't stay in a hotel or a motel by herself. So he called here. And quickly, quickly, the people in this church who've helped with family promise were able to rally and rally quickly, provide a, a safe place for her to stay until her parents came from Michigan to pick her up. Very real, very tangible ways that we draw together to put our little with God's much to reach out into a world that needs to know they matter to God. They are not weeds. That they matter to God and that they matter to us. And in doing that, that when we do it as a group, we develop eyes, we develop ears. We're sensitive to, to those around us to be able to say, yes, it is God's kingdom. It is God's new creation that's growing up around us. And our eyes are made sensitive to the breath of God, to the rule of God, to the creation of God that's all around for those who have eyes and ears to see and hear. It's not about weeds. It's not about weeds. It's about planting and growing and working right here in the kingdom of God. I read a story about a Scottish woman who sent her son away to college for the first time. He entered into to Oxford University, and she was skeptical about how her Scottish son Donald would do among what she considered the uppity Brits. Well, he started school there, and a little over a week later, she called him to found, find out how he was doing. He said, oh, mother, you wouldn't believe it. She, he, he said, these Brits are a rude and a noisy people. She said, Donald, you don't mean it. He said, yes, I do. He said, a neighbor on one side of me here in the dorm 
All night long, he bangs his head on the wall. She said, Donald, how do you stand it? He said, oh, oh, it's, it's worse on the other side. Here in the door, my neighbor on the other side, he screams all night long and, and curses and yells out profanities. She said, oh, how do you tolerate that? He said, well, I do the best I can. I just continue to sit here quietly playing my bagpipes. <laughs> well, we have, a, we have a tendency to think the problem's somebody else, don't we? We have a tendency to think that that's really where the weeds are. But Jesus came, not just to to tell us stories, but to show us, to show us who God is. That he is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his nature. And so when Jesus gave his life on the cross for you and for me, It was to take away the power of those weeds. To take away their, their strength. To take away all those things that would defeat us. Those things that keep us self centered rather than God centered. And when He gave His life on the cross, He did it to wipe away. All the sin, all the shame, all the guilt, all those things that would destroy us. And he rose from the grave in order that his power, his power that might keep us planting, his power that might keep us growing, his power that might keep us working, his power that might keep us focused, not on the weeds, but on him. That the power of his Holy Spirit would continue to worship And to work through us. That our lives might be fertile ground, not for weeds, but for a new world, a new kingdom, a new creation that might grow in in you and in me. The Apostle Paul was trying to to grow a church where, where he couldn't be any longer. It was a church in a town called Philippi. And he wrote a letter to them, trying to encourage them, trying to build them up, trying to keep them focused on on God's new creation, on God's kingdom. And and in chapter 1, verse 6, he says, I'm confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will perfect it until the day that Jesus comes again. That Paul's confidence wasn't on their abilities, his confidence was on the risen Christ, that he would continue, continue to plant, to grow, and to work. Not focusing on the weeds, but instead focusing on that relationship with him. This morning it may be that you're in a place where during this pandemic, you've began to to listen to those who, who point out weeds and say that our lives should be all about pointing out weeds and how somebody else isn't doing it right. We've become a nation, a culture, who's, who we consider it our job, our responsibility to criticize how other folks aren't doing it right. Oh, we surround ourselves with judge shows, judge programs, Judge Judy, Judge Wapner, Judge Joe Brown, Judge Miles Lane, judge show after judge show after judge show. So we can sit in the judge's seat and practice, practice pointing out the weeds in other folks' lives. Jesus has something better for you than that. It's his life. The life of the risen Christ, alive today, living in you. And it may be that you've, you've never invited him to make his home in your heart. That you've never confessed. Confessed that those weeds growing up within you are really what 
you need to turn over to him. And that you begin to focus your eyes instead on, on his power to plant, his power to grow, his power to work in your life. And you begin to grow in worship of him. And your desire is to do that this morning. Well, I want to pray with you. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this old story, well, we might read it at first blush and think it's about the weeds. But really, really, Lord, it's about us. That you might live your life in and through us. That you might continue to plant. You might continue to grow. You might continue to work in us. And, and that our, our eyes might be transformed. Our ears might be transformed. And we might develop eyes and ears that see and hear right in the middle of this old creation, not weeds, but begin to see you. That's the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we ask the power of your Holy Spirit right now, right now, today, that you begin to grow in us and begin to change us. That you live your life through us and and we begin to give our lives to you in, in worship and in praise. And in turn, we might begin to, to see in this stranger, we might begin to see you. And that we might begin to, to let them know that they matter to God, so they matter to us. Lord, it may be that for a long time, there's some in the sound of my voice that have been nurturing that hurt, that wound, that heartache that first came about in family. And that's all that they've been able to see in their lives is that, that weed, that wound. Lord, you have a holy power that we don't have. And I ask that you breathe. Breathe into each of us the power of your Holy Spirit. That our eyes begin to be focused not on the wound, not on the weed, but on you. And then in our families we begin to, to plant, to grow, to work. The way that you would plant and grow and work with the power of your Holy Spirit. This day it's yours. May we not only turn over the, the weeds to you, but Lord, I ask that you give us strength, strength to turn, to repent, to put on a, a whole new attitude, a whole new self that has eyes and ears that see and hear your new creation, your kingdom all around us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. 
and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.